Let me first say how very excited I am to be here uh, today uh, and uh, to celebrate the opening of this great place. Uh, these two gentlemen, uh, Kumi and Bumi, I have sort of worked with them over the years, very, very many years. Of course, long before I became vice president and long before they became wealthy and successful. <laughs> but I think we have at least uh, managed to encourage ourselves as we went along. And I'm really pleased to see the birth of this new place. So we're here today to commission the Vibranium Valley, a place devoted to talent, innovation, data, and entrepreneurship. A bold idea birthed in the hearts of two young Nigerians and audaciously delivered by a team of over a hundred other young Nigerians. We're told that the Vibranium Valley houses 30 tech companies with the potential to house up to 50 more, 50 companies, and that it is the largest technology campus in sub-Saharan Africa. <laughs> but perhaps what lies in the subtext of that story is how crucial this is to our dream of an economic future as a nation. So here we have a metaphor for our future, a foreshadow of a glorious new day whereby they share God-given talent, creativity, hard work, and knowledge, phenomenal value and prosperity are built, not just for the entrepreneurs, but for the millions whom they provide services for, and for this nation which has given them the opportunity. The founders of this amazing technology campus, Kumi Demore and Bumi Akiyamiju, deserve our commendation for this, not just for this, but also for the past. They founded the Ventures Garden Group, which grew their technology company from a startup to a $60 million pan-African growth stage technology holding company in just seven years. But more importantly, through their investment company, which is called the Greenhouse Capital. They have created an ecosystem of world-class technology companies. These companies include Six, which is wholly owned by them, and investments in other young companies, including the well-known Flutterway, Renesas Energy, Edutech, Fenotech, Minds.io, CC Hubs Growth Fund, Ape, the APP Zone, App Zone, yes. and 10 others. These companies provide technology-driven solutions to some of the most difficult development problems confronting us today. I will just help me talk about a few of them. On the part of government, we are putting our money where our mouth is. We believe that it is our role to provide the environment where innovation can thrive. So we're including technology startups and businesses in our list of businesses eligible for pioneer status, and that means tax holidays. Also, <laughs> also, both the CBN, the central bank, and the BOI are working on intervention funds and loans for technology startups. While we have to date opened uh, about three state-of-the-art technology hubs, these are government-supported technology hubs, Two weeks ago, I was in Yola to open the Northeast Humanitarian Technology Hub, which specializes in innovation for victims of conflict. There, I saw the 3D printing of processes or artificial limbs, one an artificial arm for a 12-year-old boy, Mohammed, and with his new arm, he can now write. He can actually write, he can open doors with his new arm all created in that technology hub. Only last Friday, I opened the South-South Innovation Hub in Benin, Edo State. This is the collaboration between the federal government and the Edo State government. And there I listened to 12 outstanding pitches by potential innovators and, and uh, technology companies. Next month, I'll be opening the Climate Change Technology Hub at the Pan-African University 
a collaboration between the federal government and that university. Later today, as a matter of fact, as we leave here, I will be in, at the University of Lagos to lay the foundation of an innovation hub, and, and this innovation hub is also supported by the federal government, and launch the Students' Innovation Challenge. And last week, we inaugurated the Technology and Creativity Working Group. Now, this working group is part of our Industrial and Competitiveness Advisory Council. It's a group of young tech innovators and entertainment entrepreneurs who will help government to develop policies that will shape the future of technology and entertainment. We are committed to playing a pivotal role in, in, defining and, and in defining the future for both technology, for creativity and business generally, but also in ensuring that government is a facilitator, not an obstacle to business. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there is also here in this place the hand of providence, and I believe that we must recognize it. In this place, this place where we are today, for many years housed the Concord Press, a once highly successful national newspaper owned by Chief MKO Abiola, GCFR, the streamers. winner of the June 12, 1993 presidential election. <laughs> Abiola's campaign slogan was hope and the eradication of poverty. But the enemies of our freedoms and democracy thought that they had killed that dream by the annulment of the election and the complete destruction of the Concord newspapers. But they were wrong. In the profound words, of that Mexican proverb, and I quote, they tried to bury us, but they didn't know that we were seeds. <laughs> and so when we thought you had buried us, they did not know that the seeds would grow. Today, we celebrate the trees that have grown from the seeds that were buried here. The hope, the hope that they thought they killed has risen again through the young men and women, not even born, some not even born, when that travesty was committed. So Concord was only the foundation for vibranium. No one, no one can stop the inexorable march of hope. We are grateful to God that we are witnesses today to the full cycle of history. And so it's now my special privilege to formally open this great place of innovation and creativity for a new generation of young men and women who carry with them the hope and aspirations of a nation by bringing, built for the benefit of the Nigerian people and to the glory of God. Thank you.